name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. In our last Bible study, we learned of the forerunner of Jesus Christ, his cousin, John, who was referred to as John the Baptist, because the Lord used him to prepare the people to receive the Messiah. And we saw also in that chapter how Jesus came to John to be baptized, not for sin, like we have to be baptized, uh, confessing our sins and forsaking our sins, but as a ceremonial washing because he was about to be anointed by the Holy Spirit and then begin his ministry. So today we're going to continue our study of the great book of Matthew with the fourth chapter. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now notice right after he had been baptized and the Holy Spirit came down upon him in the form of a dove. And the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led out into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. Verse 2 says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And hungry. That means he was hungry. So he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was very hungry. Verse 3, and when the tempter, that's Satan the devil, came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. He said, if you are really the son of God, turn those stones into a couple loaves of bread. Verse 4. But he answered, Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now he's quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It is vital, brothers and sisters, that you and I study to show ourselves to prove unto God. A workman, and I always add woman, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not only because we learn of God, but we also learn how to do spiritual combat with the enemy of life, Satan the devil. And we're going to see as we go through this fourth chapter, every time Satan tried to get him to do something contrary to the word of God, Jesus hit him with the word of God. And so that's why it's so important that we know the word of God. And so Jesus told him, it is written. He was, he's talking about written in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Man, that's mankind, men and women, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. And there's nothing more important than us learning God's word, rightly dividing it, because some of the things in the Old Testament we no longer have to practice, and living accordingly. If you think you're going to just do what you jolly well please and make it into heaven, you have been deceived. Anyway, verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city 
and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. That means he set him on one of the corners of the temple. Verse 6. And he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So Satan took it to the next level. He took Jesus into the holy city of Jerusalem and put him on the corner of the temple. And he says, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, he, referring to his father, Jehovah God, shall give his angels charge concerning you. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. Now he was quoting from Psalms 91 verse 11. Now this is very interesting. Because even the devil can quote scripture. He just doesn't believe the scripture. Because if he did, he wouldn't be the devil. <laughs> so he can quote scripture and he will use scripture to try to deceive you. But he was using this verse with a hidden agenda. And he was also pulling it out of context. So he's saying... If you're really the son of God, then jump off here because the Bible says Jehovah is going to send his angels to protect you. He's not going to let anything bad happen to you. So he was trying to get the Messiah to commit suicide. Let's see what happens. Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written again. Took him right back to the word. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He's quoting from Deuteronomy 6 verse 8. 16 that time and so Jesus said it is written in the law of Moses because that's one of the books that Moses wrote you shall not tempt the Lord your God so just because I am the son of God and I know the Lord loves me and he has his angels around me to protect me and just because you out there watching this video are a child of God that does not mean that you and I can live a life recklessly and, and without any caution without any caution, and think God's just going to protect us. It does not work that way. Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. If I walked out the street today and saw cars flying in both directions, and I say, well, I'm a child of God. I don't have to look to see when it's, when it's clear for me to go. I'm just going to walk out there. I'm going to close my eyes and walk out there, and God's going to send his angels and make those cars miss me or stop. I'll get knocked up in the sky by one car and probably hit by the other cars in the other lane and I'll be dead. That's what will happen to me if I do something like that. That's why the Bible says in all you're getting, you have to get an understanding. Uh, the whole verse actually says wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom and all thy getting get an understanding in Proverbs chapter 4. So it's very important that you and I know the scripture like Jesus did because Satan tried to use the scripture to trip him up and unfortunately he's using the scripture to this day to deceive millions of people because they refuse to study for themselves and ask God for the spirit to understand he has all kinds of false teachers out here pulling scriptures out of context and twisting scriptures and adding things and they're gullible a congregation just sits there with a big grin on their face, smiling and say, uh -huh. okay, Reverend, okay, okay, Pastor, okay, Pastor. And never went and studied to see if what Pastor is telling you is correct. That's why when they run into people like me, it's rare because I teach nothing but our Father's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. I don't water down anything. I don't take anything from it, and I don't add anything to it. And the people out there who truly study our Father's Word through the Spirit, they recognize that. And that's why they appreciate yours truly. Now, I'm not the only real Bible teacher out there. There's a lot of real Bible teachers out there. But all of us are going to tell you that you have to study for yourself. That's the only way you're going to know when you hear us preaching and teaching whether what we're preaching and teaching is correct. Okay? So Jesus, again, 
defeated Satan by knowing the word. He says, I'm not about to jump off of this temple because you uh, take a verse from Psalms and misquote it. He says, no, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 8, it says, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now I want you to get this. Verse 9. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, or I will give to you, if thou, if you, will fall down and worship me. Now I don't want you to miss that, because that's what Satan wants. He wants to be worshipped as God. He was a spiritual being called a cherub, created by Almighty God, that held a very high position in God's kingdom in eternity's past. But he was not content with that position. And because God had gave him so much wisdom and beauty, he got beside himself and he rebelled against Almighty God and was able to deceive a third of God's angels into joining him in that rebellion. And that's how the world came to be in this chaotic state it's in now. Right now, we are in the middle of a battle between God and the devil, good and evil, okay? And we have to choose which way we're going to go. That's what's going on right now in this world. And so Satan proclaimed in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 that he was going to exalt his throne above the stars of God and he was also going to sit in the congregation in the sides of the north and that he was going to be like the most high. That's what he wants to be worshipped. And there are people who are willingly worshipping him right now and there are a lot of people in their ignorance who are worshipping him because when you reject God, there is no neutral ground. No neutral ground. It's either you're with God or you're with the devil. The satanic Bible has one commandment. Do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. In other words, do what you want to do just as long as you don't do what God says do. So you don't have to be an outright worshiper of the devil. If you think that you're here to live as you jolly well please, Satan got you. Okay, you belong to him. And so that's what he wants. So he chose Jesus, all the kingdoms of the world. And he says, if you bow down to me and worship me, I'll give them to you. And now people will say, well, he couldn't give something that didn't belong to him. No, it actually does belong to him because God has allowed him to have it for a little while. Just for a little while. He's going to be kicked out of this world once and for all at the end of the um, thousand year reign of Christ after the Lord uses him to test that final generation then he's going into the lake of fire but as of now he is the God small g of this world that's right he is the prince of the power of the air and that's why the world is all messed up because it's under the control of Satan the devil so yes he does own all these kingdoms just for a little while. Let's see what Jesus tells him. Verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence. In other words, get out of here. Read it. Scram. That's what he told him. Get out of my face. He says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. To come back to the word again. Thou shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And that's a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. He said, man, you better get out of my face. It is written that you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. So even though Satan has rebelled against God, God is still his God, because God the one who made him. So he said, no. Worship goes only to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Period. Okay? And, and that's, that comes from knowing the Word. So when the enemy attacks you and I with different thoughts and ideals, if you know the Bible, you can do just like Jesus did. No, I'm not going to do that because it is written. You know, you'll know what the Bible says. It is written. It is written. So that's why it's vital that you know the word of God. 
Verse 11, then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So after he fell on three occasions, he left. That's important because when the enemy tempts us, if we stand firmly on God's truth and resist him with the word, he'll go away for a while. He'll be back, but he'll leave you alone for a while. He'll go bother somebody that he can deceive. But notice after he left, the angels came and ministered unto Jesus. So the angels came and gave him some food and water because he had been fasting for 40 days. And they probably said, good job, Lord. Keep it up. You know, a little encouragement. And that's how God does with his children. He loves us. He has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That's why we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. All right. Verse 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Now, this is important. Jesus knew that John had been locked up. So he went to Galilee. John's ministry was just to get the people ready for the Messiah, to prepare their hearts to receive him. But after that, he had to decrease and the Lord had to increase. Uh, the Bible tells us that in the book of John. So it's very important that you understand that the Lord has something for you and I to do. And when he shows you what that is, that's what you do. OK, until he says your work is done. That's why I teach our Father's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. This is what he has called me to do. This is what he has gifted me to do. And as long as I'm able, this is what I'm going to do. You will never see Minister Porter trying to become uh, uh, something that God didn't tell me to do. And you got a lot of people trying to do things that the Lord did not tell them to do. That's why you got so many bad teachers on the internet and in the world, because God did not call and gift everybody to be a teacher. There are several different types of spiritual gifts. And so you do only what God has gifted you to do and what he's called you to do until your work is done. Okay? I want you to get that. So... It was time for John to tap out and Jesus, I mean, tag out and Jesus to tag in. So he heard he was in prison. It didn't say he went and got him out of prison. No, that's what was supposed to happen. And not only was he supposed to go to prison, he was supposed to die the way he died. He was beheaded. Herod had his head chopped off. Now, some people might think that's a terrible way to go out and that's a horrible way to repay a mighty man of God. But when you mature in the word, you're going to realize that it's just the opposite. To die for Jesus is the greatest honor that any Christian could ever hope for. Because if you die for the Lord, you are guaranteed heaven. There is no ifs, ands, and buts about it. The Lord said, whosoever try to save their life shall lose their life. But whosoever shall lose their life for his sake in the gospel shall save their life. So we need to learn that and get that in our hearts because we're living in the last days. Right now, they are pushing for a one world government riding on the back of this so-called virus. This so-called deadly virus that we're all supposed to be afraid of. A virus so weak that you have a 99.97 percent a chance of surviving. So they're using that to take away our freedoms and our liberties and things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. We are headed for the great tribulation and a lot of us are going to become martyrs. A lot of us are going to suffer and we're going to be tortured and we're going to be put to death. That is the reality of what's coming and if you are not rooted and grounded in God's truth, you're not going to make it. So, Verse 13 says, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtalim. So 
it was prophesied that he would go into this area before he was even born. That's one of the acid tests of the word. That's how we know this Bible is inspired by God. Because the things that were predicted before they were fulfilled. All right? And it tells us why he went there. Verse 14, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, which is Isaiah, the prophet, saying, verse 15, the land of Zebulon and the land of Nathalem by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. This is a quote from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1, verse 16. He says, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. So it was prophesied that Jesus would go into the land of Zebulon and Nathalem after John was in prison. And everywhere he went, he was continuing the work that John started. He was telling people to repent for the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Verse 17, it says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What exactly does that mean? To repent means to have a change of heart, your mind, and a change of the way you're living your life. In other words, to turn back wholeheartedly to God and commit your life to God. And then he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does he mean by that? In other words, that government that the Lord spoke of, that he's going to establish in the last days, that's going to take control of this whole earth, is coming, and Jesus is going to be the king of it. That's what it means, and these people understood exactly what he meant when he said that, and they want to be citizens in that kingdom. So that's why a lot of them repented and turned back to the living God. Now, I felt led by the Holy Spirit to digress in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, the Bible says, And in the days of these kings, that's the ten kings that will be reigning along with the Antichrist in the last days. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That's the kingdom of heaven that Christ was telling them to repent because it was at hand. Which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand, how long? Forever. So this verse of scripture right here spoke of a kingdom that was going to be established by God in the last days, that was going to bring an end to all these corrupt kingdoms in the world, and it was going to last forever. It was never going to end. Okay? And the Bible tells us that that kingdom was going to be given to the saints of the Most High. So that's why the people would got, got all excited about it when they heard John preaching it and when they heard Jesus preaching it. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 27 the Bible says the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. And the people of God who were living during that time when Christ walked the earth, understood that. So that's why they got all excited, and that's why they started getting themselves together, because they want to be citizens in that kingdom. Anyway, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter. He's the one who nicknamed him Peter. And Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Now, it's very important that you read all four accounts on the life of Jesus Christ, because this was not the first time he met these uh, Simon, 
Peter and his brother Andrew. In the book of John chapter 1 and in Luke, we learn that he had met them before. But this is when he comes to call them into service as ministers to help with the spreading of the gospel. Okay? So he came by their house, and they were fishermen by trade. Verse 19, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He said, it's time. 20, and they straightway left their nets and followed him. 21, and going on from thence, going on from there, he saw two other brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. This was not the first time that he met them. So that's why he knew where they were. He went up there and said, it's time to go, boys. Come on. Verse 22. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. A synagogue was a place where the Jews met to have a worship service, okay? The equivalent of what people call church buildings today. And he went into their synagogues teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The word gospel means a good message or good news. And so he was telling them that I'm here now, your long-awaited Messiah, and I'm about to establish the kingdom. Of heaven. This is what he was preaching. Verse, um, I mean, uh, the verse continues, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Now, this was something that was prophesied in the Old Testament that he would do as well as evidence that he was the long awaited Messiah. So they saw miracles unlike any ever mentioned in the history of their people up to that point. The Lord had performed miracles with Moses and Elijah and some of the prophets, but Christ did more miracles than they, than they all, okay? In fulfillment of what the scriptures said he would do. 24, and because of those miracles that he was performing, along with his preaching of the kingdom, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers, that means various diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, those people who were possessed with demons, in other words, and those who were lunatic, people who've gone crazy, and those who had the palsy, and he what? Healed them, every last one of them as evidence that he was the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of the world, God's anointed king, okay, of God's soon-to-be kingdom. Verse 25, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from, and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan and that would happen to this very day if God was using his ministers to perform great signs and wonders. So it's very important that you understand the word because Jesus did that. And that power was given to the first century of believers. Peter and Paul and, and, and a lot of them performed miracles too. But there would come a time when the miracles would cease to be performed and it becomes strictly a matter of faith now, okay? You know, people want to see a sign from God where well, they better learn about the sign of the times because you're not going to see any miracles performed by God's people in this time. The next miracle performing people you're going to see are going to be the false Christ and the false prophets. And if you don't know your Bible, you're going to get caught up in that deception. The Bible tells us when the two witnesses come in Jerusalem that they are going to be used by God to perform some signs and wonders too. But beyond that, no. So it's very important, brothers and sisters, that you study to show yourself approved. A workman, and I always add woman, 
that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number which is 630-441-4563. And then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon. So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, send it to BartonAaronPorter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, Please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain. And God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. And I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store. Check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So until next time. 
This is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye. I want to tell you guys about my brand new t-shirt, a blood donor saved my life. And on the back it reads, and his name is Jesus Christ. This is just one of many of my own custom made t-shirts that can be used as the perfect tool to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ without you ever opening your mouth. And they are now available at my online t-shirt store at godwear.store. And all my t-shirts come in hoodies, women t-shirts, and coffee mugs. So I encourage you to go to my online t-shirt store and get yourself some godwear today.